First change, our uh, first was kind of give you an update with Bonzo. There's been some regulatory changes that uh, a lot of it comes down to the way that we're using voicemail drops and the stages and times that that those can be delivered uh, on the B two B side. So going after agents, you know, you can you can continue to use the voicemail drops and and continue to you know go after them in the, the same approach that we have been. But primarily on the D to C side, uh, and Joe, if you you know just kind of talking with me you know here but it's one voicemail drop a month uh for you know. yeah if it's like a un, unopted in just like um you know this basically just affects those of you guys who are buying trigger leads or just basically data right so we're working on an alternative solution and this is just purely lead generation based uh with go high level so uh so that's going to be something kind of where you sign up with your own EIN and you can just blast. So we, we've we've had people pretty much just, and not just e-mortgage, but a lot of people at e-mortgage have just been mess, mass messaging. Um, and it's not not only caused us a lot of bad reviews, which we always have to kind of fight, but, uh, but it also, um, the the actual company bonzo has actually got some regulatory issues as a result of just uh you know mass messaging specifically trigger data um so trigger data we're going to kind of put a you know we're going to try to mitigate those issues and um we're going to be using a uh another solution which we're working on the build out for for the and if you guys aren't doing triggers and i don't know who is actually doing trigger data here I don't know if anyone on this call is even doing trigger data, um, but the, I, I've already talked to all the big accounts who are doing trigger data, so they're already kept up to breath date. Um, uh, but pretty much like free rate update leads or real estate realtor leads aren't really impacted. Um, okay, yeah. Then Lauren, if a lot of you guys are doing trigger data. I mean, you guys got, got to reach out to me. We're going to work on another solution, but. If you abuse the policy that Bonzo put into place in regards to just unopted in lead inquiries, and then they they're gonna cut you. Yeah, and and the 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 big thing that like the reason that Bonzo is concerned about this because they could lose you know the relationships they have with carriers, which could significantly affect their business and their model. So. Uh, you know, they're doing this to, to reduce liability and reduce risk, uh, you know, and, and ultimately what you could be doing, because I know we're using fly broadcasts with these, you know, with these leads to try and just get people to respond. You know, there's no, uh, you know, there's no replacement for picking up the phone and calling, you know, and getting someone on the phone and speaking to them that way. Yeah, um, with these people, I mean, that's not even a, really an option because they're doing it at scale, right? So we're not going to tell people to manually call because... It's incredibly inefficient and you're not going to replace calling thousands of people concurrently to, to get some, some interest. Um, but um, when we roll out the go high level solution, which we're doing at the enterprise level, I mean, there's some good, some silver linings. It's going to be cheaper. Um, so it's going to be significantly cheaper than Bonzo on the lead gen side. Um, but uh there you are going to have to sign up with your own EIN number. So right now Bonzo has been carrying that risk uh with their EIN um getting us approved. So when you guys sign up it's going to be your EIN and uh you're going to be approved directly with the carrier. So we're setting that up for you guys. Um those of you guys who know people are doing this that did not attend the meeting today just go ahead and pass that information along to them. Uh, we're going to have a Bonzo best practice session tomorrow. Um, and we'll, we'll probably, we'll just be kind of addressing it throughout the week. Yeah. The, the, I think the big thing to, um, you know, Joe, they shouldn't seize triggers, right? Um, I, I don't know how fast they're making us, you know, implement this. Um, I don't have a solution now, but uh, no, no, you're going to be able to, you you're gonna still be able to message right now, but we're working on the solution. They haven't given me like a firm date. They they basically want me to um 
So they want us to implement the opt out immediately. So you, right now, a lot of people don't have the opt out language. So you got to have that. Um, so, so no, it does not cover us entirely. They still want. So what Bonzo wants to see on triggers is a 1% opt out rate, which is impossible because um, we're like 20 to 30% opt outs, like a you know, 2000 X what, what the expectations are. Um, so this is regulatory action, probably some of the merger that happened as well. So it's not like, you know, um, so video, video, uh, is, uh, the same thing I think as voicemail, cause you're sending it as a video. The so, more yeah, multi multimedia message. It's, a, it's an MMS. Um, and I, I don't think they specifically actually indicated MMS. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't indicate anything with MMS, but in your text messages, if it goes out or text the way that they go out and with your MMS, you have to have the, that opt, you know, stop to opt out like that in, in, in the message. Um, so yeah. that you're there. And I'm sure you'll get like warnings before. I think they're hard coding a lot of this into the software anyway. So, um, so I don't know what changes you really need to make until they actually hard code it. But I think the hard coding goes into effect this week. So if some of your messages don't go through or whatever the case is, um, that's that's probably why. Uh, but, but again, silver linings, we found an alternative solution to doing more business at a cheaper price. Actually, it's not an alternative. I've been using it um, for my B2B. Uh, strategy and um, and it's it's an incredible solution. Um, it, it's uh, it's just a lot more robust, a lot more features. Zach, you're using GHS. Yeah, right? yeah, and kind of kind of shed some light on that. It's just an alternative option with Go High Level. It's uh, essentially creating an environment where we can run these campaigns. Obviously, with what Joe's talking about, you have to set up your own EIN, which allows you to get approved with the carrier, but. Uh, you know, in terms of functionality with pipelines, text messages, you know, workflows, uh, board management, it's all, you know, it can be done inside this, you know, go high level environment. And we're creating it so that at the parent level, we've got all the campaigns we could push down. Uh, this is just, you know, to make sure that if you guys are doing trigger leads, you guys are working those, we have an option and a solution for you to be able to convert. Continue business. to do it. And um, we're going to bring on at headquarters. I was actually going to be on the call right now. We're going to, we're interviewing, you know, we have a couple people helping with go high level, but we're going to have someone on staff full time at eMortgage to help, you know, problem solve, troubleshoot. They got great customer service. I just don't know how that carries over because we're piggyback. You guys are going to be piggybacking on our corporate account. Uh, and we have some solutions that we're working on there, but we're also, we're really like, it's all about support for me. Um, and getting the help that we need when we like need to launch campaigns, et cetera. So I'm taking it upon the ourselves at headquarters to cover the costs for uh, someone to help you guys uh, at the macro level. So and to answer Cliff and, and you know honor your question around moving away from Bonzo, we're not we're not moving away from Bonzo. But if you're doing trigger leads and and you know this is a core like one of your core lead pillars, we want to make sure that we provide you with a solution. Um, to continue to do that. Uh, that's you know that's we're not asking you to move your business away from you know go high level and the systems. You no, no, set. we're covering go high level. So you're just getting another system. Yeah. We're picking up the expense. You still need Bonzo for like your realtor campaigns, your updates, if you're tied into uh, Arrive. Arrive, all the other features they continue to add, sending out your uh, um, messaging with uh, with uh, the process. studio, um, keeping your post-closed clients up to date. I mean, there's like a million different use cases. The yeah. only thing this really affects is the mass marketing strategy that's it you know like yeah. the, the stuff that kind of needs that has additional scrutiny um or and uh and when you do mass market um the 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 added liability will be on you so all the things that i say to kind of protect you guys you're probably going to be a lot more cognizant of now 
Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, Patrick, we'll have a rollout when we're, you know, once everything's final, you know, finished and set up and, and we'll have, uh, you know, some training sessions around that and, and be able to get you tied into the environment. There'll be some steps like you have to sign up for a Twilio account. There's some integrations that we have to connect with your individual account. Uh, you know, but we'll, we'll put a, a, you know, a training session and a workflow for everyone to, uh, you know, to, to go through the process. If, you know, you're, you're, doing those mass marketing types of campaigns. Yeah, it's a good solution, guys. It's And uh, it's more of a permanent solution that'll keep everybody on the straight and narrow and protected. So should we stop marking through Bonzo with triggers immediately? I think they're gonna hard code it. So you're they're gonna stop you uh, anyways. So, I mean- How are they gonna know it's a trigger if we don't indicate? Because it? your opt-out rate's gonna be so high. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. So like you, you notice your realtor stuff, they don't care. Um, obviously free rate update, they don't care. They're opted in. Triggers have just an insane opt-out rate. You know, they got like a 30% opt-out rate. So, yeah. so, so, so does cold data. So from what I understand, if we use opt-in data, we don't even need to use the opt-out. Uh... That's right. Yeah. You don't have to opt them out. I mean, technically you're supposed to, you know, like big corporations do that. Um, so if you want additional language, you know, the giving people the option to opt out, you know, they always opt out. Like they just see stop, they don't even read your text. So, um, but you do have to be, what's happening right now, and I'll just be honest with you guys, because this happened to us at headquarters is we send out messages, a bunch of people respond, nobody gets responded to, leads or opt out. So we're neglecting a lot of the leads we're generating. I would say we're probably neglecting like 90% of the leads we're generating. It's so, so much to the point where like, you know, I get, you know, they're like, why don't these guys answer the leads? Why don't they pick up the phones? Yada, yada. So, you know, cause I know, cause I pilot this stuff myself. Um, and I know that the opt even, even the response rates, cause the response rates are so high. Most people uh, are just not able to get to the amount of leads that are being generated. So just be cautious of that too. You load in 10,000 records, you get a thousand responses. You're just one person, you know, you're kind of abusing the system. So that's another thing that's been happening is we've all just been abusing the amount of leads. We're getting so many leads, we can't take it. And then what happens organically is just complaints, right? Complaints, not just to you, then they complain to the carriers and then, you know, so. That's the big thing is the carrier complaints because if they if you get shut off like you, you know you can't do it and that's the i mean even to like b2b types of of campaigns like if you're marked as spam like that's you're not going to be able to win that way and i know this is not like i didn't want to be like talking about this we just got back from a great meet stuff but compliance that's what keeps us in business you know like marketing i'm a marketing guy i've been dealing with carriers and lead gen and you know, trying to stay compliant and doing the song and dance for, you know, 20 years. Right. So, um, but we always, we just, at the end of the day, we have to comply with these regulators and these carriers so we can continue to market and we got to do it in a way that's going to be strategic and, and not abusive. And uh, that's basically, you know, some of you might've abused it. Some of you did not. I know our number one branch, they have the lowest opt-out rate with triggers but they provide the best value proposition with triggers. You know, they straight up send a quote on the very first message. So they're like, this is not fair to us, but we're going to comply. You know, they had a 6% opt-out rate, whereas, you know, we had a 25% opt-out rate. So um, and that's because their value proposition was so high. I love it. All right. Any yeah. other questions around that before we move on to? We'll get you guys rolled. We'll, we're going to roll it out. We're going to cover the CRM. It's a good solution. We're using it now for B2B strategies. You know, I got, you know, a couple people starting on it today, like Jim starting, they're reaching out to him for, you know, realtors. We've got 4,000, I mean, for loan officers, we've got 4,000, 5 million plus LOs starting Jim on that today. Um, so, you know, it's a great solution. You, the, you book your calls through it, ties to your calendar, you know, it, sends out all the automations, the workflows. It's it's a next level solution. And then they're, they're, they're gonna be the first to market with the AI build out, full AI build out in it. Yeah. All right, so. And that's, and that's go high level, right? Just to, just to be sure. Just yeah, to be yeah. Sure. Okay, thank you. 
All right. So the next, uh, you know, switching back into Bonzo, uh, we've got a new campaign that has been built inside of Bonzo. It's under your uh, your converting templates. Uh, it's the cost of waiting, rent first buy. So I created this campaign specifically around, uh, you know, we're driving more conversations with agents. We're trying to present value in terms of why now they should get more people off the sidelines and how they can handle the language and framework of, you know, why now is a good time to buy. So what I did is I put together a scenario that talks about, you uh, you know, just the historical appreciation of real estate. I factor that in with how uh, home appreciation and the typical rise in appreciation, what uh, percentage of equity you're gaining on your home, factoring that with where interest rates are at today, uh, a scenario that we can uh, that we can share with our real estate partners. Because the whole framework of what we're trying to do here is we want them thinking of ways they can have better conversations with their sphere, with their you know people in their network. Um, but also ways that that they can connect you with clients that are you know currently renting that are you know I uh, that are spending money that you know think they're on the sidelines just waiting for interest rates to come down. So uh, put together this sequence. What I'm looking and and you know how we can define success with this is you know the the conversations, the people that you have met with on our thirty for thirty challenge, uh, agents that are in your sphere that maybe they were a listing agent that you know you have a relationship with but haven't done a ton of deals. This is just a three-day sequence just to get some people. It's Monday. Let's get some people to raise their hands and say, hey, who could we strategize on? How can we help get more deals off the sidelines as we head into uh, you know, the weekend? Uh, so this is a great, you know, it's a great campaign. It's just inside your account, you know, cost of waiting, rent first buy. Uh, I created some just language and, and you know, interest. Uh, and then we're nudging people with some text messages to guide them to the email and then nudge them on a time when they can talk and strategize on ways that you can help get, you know, more buyers off the sidelines for them. Uh, you know, and and the thing I would I would recommend, you know, as you're creating this campaign, even if you, you know, you 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 shot a video and you just dropped it in this first step. Uh, just being able to explain, because what I'm seeing now, last week, I spoke with, uh, uh, I spoke with some agents for one of our loan officers and, and, you know, the struggle that they have is like, how do they frame, you know, where the market's at to more people and really the numbers speak for itself. And that's why we wanted to create a campaign that people can digest and read uh, based on, on, you know, actual numbers, where the market's at, what historical home appreciation is, uh, and you know, give you guys a campaign that that can create some action. Uh, you know, so if you guys want to go in and change any of the you know the the language within here, you guys are able to edit it. But I put together the you know the sequence so that uh, you guys could shake with some more conversations with agents and and ultimately get their buyers off the sidelines. What I would also recommend doing is you know for any of these agents that are engaged that are responding, do a Facebook live with them. You know, go live on Facebook and talk about where the market's at. You know, and if you're going live with these clients on face, I mean, with these partners on Facebook, what you're that's allowing you to do is to attach your network with their network so that they see you're their mortgage partner. You can talk about, you know, how is CPI affecting, you know, the market, you know, historically, where are we seeing, you know, the what the, the historical benefits of, of buying a home from an appreciation standpoint, tax benefit standpoint. Uh, we want you guys to get in front of more people. Uh, you know, and, and have content that you can use to just drop into your sphere. Uh, so this is a great campaign to, to be able to do that and, and shake loose some action with people who are, uh, you know, or agents who have people sitting on, on the sidelines. Anyone have any questions about this rent versus buy quick response campaign? I wanted to add to this. If we can, um, I, and I don't know if we have a rent versus buy flyer in the design studio, if not like, um, I'll come up with some some uh, design concepts and then let's create a rent versus buy flyer in the design studio and then add it to that campaign. So they just they just get a visual one day. Um, okay. I think a, a flyer to go with it would be a, a good concept, just adding that layer of a value proposition. I've got a I've got a graph here that shows to that. 
So what, what we do guys, and I don't know if everyone's on the design studio, this is a service that we provide you guys for free. What this is, we come up with designs and concepts for, for marketing and uh, then we, we white label it. And then the design studio basically brands it for you. So it adds your picture, your QR code, your likeness or whatever you want on it. Um, and then, you know, we could add realtors on there or whatever, but, um, but yeah, I want to make sure you guys are using that and then stacking it with, with Bonzo. We did a Bonzo integration. So literally it's a click of a button. Um, and then, you know, you got a full Bonzo integration with the design studio. It's an incredible tool. It's free. Um, but I, I don't know how, how much it's being leveraged, but as we come up with these campaigns and then I just kind of thought of adding that flyer, um, yeah, and GHL will integrate with Bonzo. Um, but, you know, obviously, and that's a solution too, Patrick, is like once the lead is created, then you can just shoot it over. Yeah, I was going to say, Patrick, can you give me a use case? Like, so would you want just the integrate, like once you move uh, that like trigger lead into an appointment set stage, you want them migrated into Bonzo or like what would the use case be? Uh, that's what I would think the use case would be right there, Zach. Yeah. But anything different, Patrick? I think you're muted. Yeah. Okay. Well, just, yeah, message me if, if there was a. I'm sorry. I'm here. I would say, for example, you use Go High Level for all your cold outlakes, outtakes, but once someone responds. Yes. Yes. That's exactly it. To Bonzo. Yeah. So all your cold outreach. Would well, be the, the reason I ask is, Joe, because if if we're going to integrate those two, the, the, there has to be a trigger that that pushes it. So it could be a stage. It could yeah, be, yeah. So once it becomes an opportunity or an appointment. Yeah, exactly. That then we can trigger that contact into um, into Bonzo. Okay, and Eric is not on this call, but I'm going to drop his presentation. We. And then uh, Zach, since, cause I'm seeing a lot more, now we're starting to see, I was talking to people at the event and a lot of people are starting to finally use free rate updates, leads and getting some good uh, traction. And I'm seeing a lot of like people right now, like I'm getting billed right now as we speak for free rate. So I'm happy that you guys are taking that initiative, investing in yourselves, buying leads. Um, the conversions are great. Um, make sure that they're properly being worked. And then I don't know if we built a flyer out for free rate update follow-ups, but I want to add that as well. So do we have uh, anyone on this call that's do that's using uh free rate update leads. I mean anyone? everyone's really raising their hand, but you know anyone in the chat box? Keaton, right. talk to me a little bit about uh just you know the, the like the experience with those leads. Uh you know, the reason I the, what I want to know is uh because we've built out a 21 day campaign and like, are you making contact with those leads in 21 days? Do you like, should we expand it to three months? Like I'm just, uh, I'm trying to get some feedback on like, you know, quality conversion of those leads. And, so I, and I want to comment real quick um, that if you guys aren't running these people through an automation and had no luck, like I could have told you that would have been the case up front. Like if you're not going to, if you're not going to pound these guys with follow-ups after you're just not going to convert them. So if you don't plan on, if you just plan on like getting a lead and calling them, it's don't even do it. You know, like you have to build out a campaign, which we built out for you, make sure that campaign is firing. So double check to make sure that the automation is working. Um, because like Jacob's like, I used it. No luck. Like I'll tell you, honestly, there's, if you're not going to do it, if you're not going to build out a campaign, to hit these guys in perpetuity forever until they, you know, say stop. You're just not going to convert any of these leads because I've these guys are a few. It takes like 30 days. These free rate update leads, at least for me, I would like I have an appointment this morning. I've been texting her since June or July. Yeah. Okay. And that's that's that, just how they are. It's it's basically some of them are quick, but most of them they get blown up by so many freaking people. They just get overwhelmed and then they restart it a month later and if you have a crm they're gonna know you and uh brennan's not your normal use case he, he he's coming from loan depot he knows how to work ad leads so 
Uh, Brandon, you know, because most of these people don't have your experience. So I can't say that you're going to convert them different than most of these people because they're most of these people are brokers, right? So they don't have that kind of tenacity or mindset. But, you know, you want to add anything else? Because yeah, Brandon, I was going to say, I'd love to hear kind of your perspective, you know, like, how are you working these leads, you know, 30, 60, 90 days, like, what's kind of a daily call track look like, just give me the the rundown on. on yeah. Your so I mean, when I because I'm still fairly new, I've actually uh, turned off free rate update now. But I was using them for the first couple months. And I'm still working leads um, from it. But basically, I set up a bonzo campaign. So automatically one to three leads go into the CRM right away. And I basically just reach out my name and let them know that I'm going to be sending proposals and when would be a good time to go over them. And my response rate's been good, 30%, but they fall off. So one thing that I've noticed is you have to call them and you have to get them on the phone early or you just have to be consistent with your CRM and make sure that, you know, after seven days or 20 days, they're going into another campaign. Cause that's when I noticed about 30 days was like when people would start replying, like, yes, I'm ready. Or yes, I'm interested. You know what I mean? But they get inundated with calls. They get overwhelmed. I think a lot of them just put their phones on silent or do not disturb for the first week or two. Cause they got Loan Depot, Amerisave, Westcap, and every other form they filled out. So I've just noticed that basically I throw them into the CRM, I call them. If they answer, awesome. If they don't, I'll expect to hear from them in a month, basically. How many times, like, uh, how many times are you calling on the leads before you, you know, like actually physically dialing each lead? Um, like, so what I would do is I would put a task. So the task tells me to call them on day one and day two. And that's basically it. I would, that's the only days I would call them, but I would do ringless voicemails. So like, you know, I'll do a ringless voicemail and then follow up with a text message. Hey, you know, I just missed you, um, you know, whatever, but I'll try to start, you know, um, saying things like on the voicemail, like, Hey, if you've already talked to another lender and you've been denied, like, you know, no problem. I can help you out. So I just got finished at the gym. <laughs> I'm a little winded. Um, but yeah, so like, I'll just let them know like, hey, you know, I have more options than banks basically. And if you've been told no, like give me a call. That's where 80% of my business comes from. And I'll get calls that way too. Oh, that's perfect. That makes sense. And and the, the point that I was trying to kind of dig into there as well was, uh, you know, let's pick up the phone, you know, and, and it, it typically it takes, you know, eight to 10, 12 touches before you. you know, and, uh, Brandon, some of his notes, I, I was taking notes, like what he said was gold. I hope you guys did the same thing. Um, yeah. But uh, that's how, that's how you work these leads. Uh, and then I'm, I'm going to get Teton's best practices, but uh, um, that was great stuff, Brandon. Like these guys don't know that they don't expect that. So they just work a lead. They don't get someone on the phone. They go, this is garbage. You know, like, that's just the unfortunate part of, uh, but Brandon coming from years of training at Lone Depot, he just knows how to really kind of work in, um, these leads. And then Teton. I lead everything with a HELOC too, by the way. Oh. Everyone wants a HELOC. So if you guys are quoting refinances to these people, you're shooting yourself in the foot. At least that's what I've noticed. Even if they don't qualify, you have a 550 FICO, perfect. Let me show you the HELOC you don't qualify for. <laughs> <laughs> that's, no that's i like that that's great that's nailed it for sure uh Ethan, i'd love to hear your your straight you know what's your uh your take you know your like how are you you know hammering these leads what's uh what's that look like for you so i make basically i make sure to uh it, especially like the first three days um uh, to call them at least twice, uh, once in the morning, and then I'll make them um, like an evening call as well. Um, the first time I call them, I don't leave a voicemail. Uh, and sometimes people are just call back just because it's a different number that's on their caller ID and they want to know um, who called. Um, and then from there, 
Um, I've also find a uh, success calling them on weekends as well. Um, just because they don't expect to have a business call on the weekend. So more people seem to answer their phone on a weekend. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that. A tip that I heard, uh, this agent down in San Diego speak, uh, you know, talk about is his strategy is anytime a new lead comes in is he calls them three times, like back to back to back. He's like, you know, sales typically calls twice, but that third call, your, your mom could be dying, you know? And it's like, I need to pick up this call and see who, you know, is this someone, you know, someone for me. And I actually thought that was an interesting, you know, interesting take is, is the kind of the speed dial three times in a row and see if that, you know, cause once you get them on the phone, you got your opportunity. I, uh, that I wanted to hear real quick from Amy and Daryl, you know, I saw you, you're also doing free rate updates. What's your guys' process look like? Well, are they doing it currently? I don't think they're doing it currently. They might've tried. So we got a lot of people who just tried and then yeah, just... we, we, we tried, we didn't have a lot of success yeah. and, um, but I think we're going to try again. It's just, um, we're doing a lot of triggers. That's what we're working on right now. Yeah. I mean, I think you got to make sure that the automations are built out for you, Amy. Um, and I know you like, just have your son build it all out, you know, like make sure that they're going in and hit, getting hit yeah. properly. Um, I know that you guys might have not had success because I know that if I buy these leads for corporate, they won't have success. And the reason why is because they're they're so spoiled with live calls. So they're going to do zero follow up. You know, they're going to just be like they don't even do follow up on the live calls. Like it's a problem we have. Right. So it's like. So which free rate update leads are these that everyone's talking about? Is it the ten dollar leads? The, um, like what what love of leads are we talking about? I get the ten dollar leads. Yeah, um, there's only one, one level of leads. Yeah, they have transfers, but um, but yeah, I would get the uh, the ten dollar lead. I would for internet leads. Me personally, I would never purchase an exclusive lead because um, I've always been told if people go to you know if people to fill out their information on the website, they'll also fill in another um, uh, questionnaire or survey or whatever the case may be. So then you may have purchased it from that one vendor as an exclusive, but the other the other vendor that they filled out the lead for, they're selling it to multiple people. So then I don't know. I, I consider it a waste of money for myself. Yeah, Teton, that's yeah, a I, great that's a great point. I you know seeing uh, and and I talk about that all the time. Someone who's filling out a lead form online, filling it out three or four other places to every other ad. You know, especially if they filled out a lead form on social. You know, as soon as you fill out a lead form there, you're getting 15 ads back to back to back. You know, so. I think that's an interesting, you know, interesting take there in, in terms of, of uh, you know, just not purchasing the, the exclusive leads. Hey, Zach, I think it's more for, you know, for me. So I tried out the, uh, the live transfers and it's more of they're getting me on the phone. So I don't have to do the follow up. Yeah, and that's, you know, honestly, that's worth it to me. But. Uh, what I did learn is um, the call center that is setting up the you know live transfer on us. They're setting us up for failure because it's all about rate, 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 um, and that's that's really kind of what has pushed me away from it. So it's you know they're all about you know quoting the rate, quoting the rate, quoting the rate, which is you know just a recipe for disaster. Did, did, uh, uh, did, you know, when you're talking about in terms of the way that, it, like, the person who's calling, they're talking, like, what, what's your rate at? And then they, they're just handing that over like this, or like, yeah. You know, but. yeah so they're, they're basically like, well, he's going, uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to get you connected with Reed and he's going to provide you a rate right now. Oh, got it. Yeah. I, I concur. I, I did a few warms on lead point and free rate update. Like my buddy, Steven, he loves the warms. He turns them on and off and he gets closes from what I've seen. It's about a one out of 10 on the warms. But yeah, I mean, I've got renters. I've got a bunch of crazy stuff, you know, from the free rate update warms. And my mentality was if I'm going to spend 55 or $65 for one warm that could potentially not even work, I might as well buy five or six data leads and call them until they DNC. And if I could get one or two of them on the phone, it's likely to be better 
than relying on the one warm for 60 bucks. And like he said, nothing is exclusive in this industry. It's just packaged as exclusive. But like if someone fills out one form, they're not not filling out at least one more. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. That's good insights. Uh, but but I would also say that you know of one the the life transfers are thirty five. So um, maybe uh, uh, take a look at that. But uh, you know I I do think that they're overselling the life transfers, and if I'm going to do it again, I'm going to go with the shared ones. Um, Joe, do you know how many live transfers they can sell? Is it like per market or like what the, the, the limit is around that? Well, so, those live transfers are what they're, they're one of the shared leads. They're basically calling on. Yeah. The yeah. They're, they're the shared leads. They're just getting uh, you on the phone with them. So. Got it. Right. Yeah. Just that, you know, I, I, it's always interesting to kind of see, and I, Brandon, I really appreciate you kind of sharing tips and things, you know, that, that are, that are working within, you know, within your business and, and, you know, with these age leads, we just want to make sure that you guys, you know, long-term like have, have campaigns that you're adding them to, because there's nothing greater than popping a lead in and six months later say, Hey, I'm ready now, you know, and, and you guys haven't had to do anything the last six months to be able to get people there. Um, so just making sure that we're, you know, we're triggering them in the right campaigns, uh, and, you know, also the more that you guys, uh, if you're using, um, uh, if you're using, De uh, sorry, Bonzo as a, uh, you know, as your CRM, you, you could power dial through them as well. Um, if you set up tasks on those campaigns and you're dialing out, then you could power dial through those calls relatively quickly, which is another way to just kind of be efficient with things and, and, you know, help shake loose more conversations, uh, you know, ultimately, I really what you know, if there's if there's any new lead sources, uh, do you have a PDF of the campaigns you put in Bonzo? I, I have them in a Word doc and I could share that Word doc. The other thing, too, is, Joe, on the EMC way, can we just create a tab, um, create a tab for workflow, like, you know, automation workflows, and we could just have the, the Google Docs live there because I do get a lot of requests for those for people who are in different Yeah, here. I could put it on the on our SharePoint. Okay, yeah, because I want to make sure that there's a place. I'll, I'll there. There. Okay. We got a question from Amy, who is using a dialer uh, versus calling from Bonzo? Do we have anyone using uh, using a dialer? Yeah, we have call tools. We get it for like a hundred bucks a month with the phone. You know, we have a deal worked out. What call tool is that, Joe? It's called Call Tools. Oh, Call on Tool. On the EMC way under vendors. But that allows you to just load data and it has uh, all the different numbers. So it has a high, because it's going to have a better pickup rate than Bonzo probably because they, that's all they do, right? So, um, so they just. That would be better for trigger leads for sure. Yeah. Teton uses a dialer, right, Teton? Yes, that's uh, that? so only for my um, uh, for trigger leads. Um, yeah. the internet leads from like uh from free rate, uh, like that those I'll just you know, oh, well, I guess like Bonzo or like go high level, like they're all like just considered like I mean you could use them like a power dollar and just go from like call to call. Um. You're still but using Go High Level and Bonzo, right, Teton? You use both still? Yes, just because um I don't want to put my trigger leads into Bonzo and just use up all my data space. Well, see, so you, you're basically doing what I was going to be, you know, what I'm basically forcing all these people to do anyways. <laughs> so you're doing it the, the, the right way to begin with. Uh, Eton, yeah, you're like three months ago. You're like, I told you. I told you. <laughs> yeah, no, the, I can't. Uh, <laughs> it's, like, I told you it's for, versus free. Uh, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> for the yeah, for the like for the price of it and whatnot. Um, because I want to increase my um increase the trigger leads. Um, so for those, I want to do the multi line, but I just wouldn't really use the multi line on uh the free rate leads just because of like the drop calls and just stuff like that. Like those leads, I do want to have it. Um trigger like the sms messages and voicemails so basically a lot of time when you're doing a multi-line you're not doing it on everyone we're forcing everyone to do what you do now teton yeah I mean, compliance is really 
but you but you're, you're doing it for savings cost savings primarily yeah cool any any other questions related to bonzo trigger leads any of the stuff we've covered so far drip campaigns any campaigns you guys need built whether it's bonzo or just on a word doc that you can put into your crm Okay. Last thing I just wanted to make sure everyone had access to, Eric's not on the call, but I want to give Eric a big shout out. We met last week. We're talking on strategies, how you can approach first-time home buyers, how you can hold workshops with your agents, how you can present to first-time home buyers the value of, you know, getting in and starting building wealth through real estate. Uh, he shared his PowerPoint presentation, which I've dropped into the comments. I'll, I'll share it once more. So everyone... that, and I'll send that to the design studio so we could customize it. He had a good turnout. He took, he talked to me about it. Um, and he said, you know, he got some, some clients to show up. I'm like, it's your first webinar you've hosted. You know, I'm hoping you didn't expect a ton of people. You know, and he's like, no, like six people came I'm like, that's great. Yeah, I and I think the the point here and, and with Eric's experience is, you know, it's it, you don't just add water and magic happens. You got to be consistent with it. You know, do a webinar once a month. Do you know, do an event. And I think in today's market, really presenting these first time home buyers, the emphasis on the cost of waiting. You know how how much equity and appreciation you're losing out on because you really have to. You're trying to reposition that conversation around where rates are at today versus how much your home's going to appreciate and equity you could build. Uh, and, and I think it's, you know, it's important the way that you're presenting and, and you're, you're hosting these webinars, but it, where a lot of people struggle and what I speak with a lot of you guys about is like, I don't have the content. I don't know where to begin. You know, you've got a foundation, a presentation that you can use. Obviously you can go in and adjust the market details. So it, you know, instead of it being Los Angeles, it could be Virginia or Virginia beach, wherever, you know, you guys are at, uh, you know, and and uh, let's see. Don't you need to be certified to do to do first time home buyers? Uh, I don't. I I have, I don't think Joe. You don't need to be certified to do first time home buyers, do you? No, you, you don't need to be certified. Yeah. Uh, so just use this. You know, use this content. Something that you can leverage and and you know be able to to push out there and and just generate more conversations, more opportunities with. Uh, you know, with people, I'm going to be adding some new workflows to Bonzo this week. Uh, you know, and one specific is around arrive in the in process communication. We've got a lot of uh, more and more loan officers are coming to us with, you know, looking to get arrive integrated and connected and want to communicate with uh, not only the borrowers, but buyers, agents, sellers, agents throughout the, the transaction. So what I'm doing is setting up a uh, a template pipeline with uh, campaigns that connect to those stages. So anyone that's on Arrive that wants to do in-process communications, uh, you guys will have a resource for that as well. And guys, everybody, everybody should do that. Every There's no like, if you got a client in process, you need to be wowing the experience there isn't like uh you don't that's not something that you might think about doing that is something that is absolutely mandatory because that's going to create the the level of experience that your client wants to see they want to be perpetually updated throughout every stage of the process that's not you know that that's not something that you might want to think about doing that's like some of you guys are doing one or two loans a month like you need to keep the, I know you're manually updating them but even setting that automated video like hey congratulations your loan was approved and uh little video from you i mean that they want to see that you know is this the you'll never hear someone say oh throughout a process like oh the customer service there was just too much customer service i didn't like that you know like no one's ever going to say that ever so uh please make sure without a doubt that you do that like zach that's not something up for question that's something that everybody should do now me personally like I have to do something like that because my customer service, I can't manually call somebody, right? So it's like mandatory for my my business. The big thing that I, I, I want to promote too with this integration and the, the pipelines communication with Arrive is we've got a sequence specifically for the listing agent. So being able to generate meetings with the listing agent post-transaction so that you can conversate with a warm opportunity. Uh, just trying to be able to, you know, tee, tee up, uh, you know, more really just more opportunities through automation. So uh, you keep that in mind, the listing agent on the other side of your buy side deals, 
you know, there's, there's opportunity if, if it's approached the right way. And the reason that we're approaching or the way that we're approaching the right way is we're keeping them informed throughout the transaction. We're emphasizing it's not just about getting you into the home, it's helping you manage and create wealth through real estate. So the agent is seeing, you know, just your level of communication, your five-star experience, just that's going to, that's going to create more conversations and, and ultimately more referrals from, you know, from these agents. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind, uh, arrive automations and, and being able to roll, roll that out. Zach, I want to, so people understand this slide deck too, like let's run through it real quick, just because some people might be like, what is this? Yeah. You know? So like, I'm going to pull it up and I'll share my, my screen, but just because I want to make sure that everyone understands. Number one, you could generate your own QR code. So I just sent it to our design team. We're going to be able to generate your QR code. You could generate that right through um, the, the design studio and it'll generate for you. This, as you see, Eric has WISP. This is WISP. If you guys aren't using WISP, we've had multiple trainings on WISP. WISP is a game changer for your realtor partners. When it comes to lead gen, everybody who comes into an open house, um, this has changed the game for, for, for your realtor partners. Um, they scan this. Now you grab their data. They don't have to scan. They don't have to do anything. So, so Eric, he also used it for his webinar. He's like, don't sign in. Just scan this. He grabbed their data. So he made them go through two calls of action here. And then the rest is pretty much, you know, normal stuff you guys know how to present. You, you change your, your bio, grab that from your microsite. And I'm hoping you guys all updated your microsite because we've created an incredible funnel solution. Um, and then, uh, and then uh, you know, that's pretty much it. You guys, this is all pretty much the normal stuff. He has a good deck here. I'm going to customize this so you, it's branded with your likeness on it. It'll have your picture. We're going to have your picture and all that here. So um, I already sent to the design team. So we'll put it on the design studio for you guys. I think we have other first time home buyer ones, but I like that he added this QR code in the WISP in the very beginning. Hey, Joe. Um, for other webinars, because that's something that uh, I've been talking to my team about is doing uh, once a month. Um, if we have an idea, is that something that either you or the marketing team or whoever can? help us create. Yeah, absolutely. And then I know Reed, we're wrapping up. I know you you have a deck coming out for the My Home IQ, which is its own presentation to realtors. The, That's already been done. The, it's a deck? It's a, slide uh, deck. It's a PDF. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll forward that to you if you or uh, yeah, the, you want to drop it in the chat and then are we putting that in the design studio too? You want to send it to me and then I'll put that in the design studio as well? Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Um, yeah, I'll do that. So that's another thing. My home IQ cost you peanuts, 10 cents a record. We worked out, which is like basically their raw cost on it. And uh, we have a full presentation, to, a value proposition presentation to real estate agents on that to help them leverage their database. I just picked up a DSCR loan uh, today from Home IQ. Yeah, that's also another solution. That's like automated. That's straight up. Yeah. Real, you do nothing and leads come. You do nothing and these that's what you know that's your favorite kind of marketing by the way in the levels of marketing <laughs> <laughs> um yeah okay cool um any other questions joe uh what call it? um teton right now that i'm working with they're overseas uh all but they're like they sound amazing um and I don't have them, I'm not, I'm just basically, I'm scrubbing for realtors or loan officers. I'm not doing uh, consumers with it, but you can use consumers. You can use it with consumers. You just got to give them the data and then get them on your dialer. And they sound like, they got like PhDs, 12, 12 to 1400 a month. They're fantastic. Not bad. And they're like all go high level proficient. So they're like, you know, they're skilled at a high level CRM. And reach out to me. I, I can plug you. Do, do you want, do you need someone Teton? Do you need some, some extra hands? Um, so I was thinking about, um, 
Um, so I was on the, um, the high level Facebook group and I, you know, I saw that, you know, there are some people that post them in there and I figure, you know, starting off, um, maybe just to have someone do it, um, like part-time at first, but not necessarily the, uh, not necessarily the calls, but as far as, um, you know, just cleaning up some of the, cleaning up some of the data, um, maybe also doing like, um, uh, like some of the marketing. So like, um, like just different posts, just, uh, just different things like to use, uh, kind of like oh, a, uh, assistant type deal, but through, uh, through high level, cause I know there are people that do that, but I figure since you already knew a company that'll save me time from trying this one and trying that one. Yeah. Yeah. I got someone for you. I'll make an intro. Okay. Right now. okay I appreciate it. And then he'll get you someone. So yeah, guys, I want to like really, really tell you guys, as you see, rates keep going up. People are leaving the industry. What Matt Ishbia said to all of us, like, you got to be positive every single day. Like, rates are up today. That's great news. You know why? Because more people left the industry. That means more market share for you guys. It's a great day. Let the rates keep rolling. Like, we're staffing. We're growing. We're already the number one non-delegated lender in the country. We're going to be the number one broker in the country. If we just keep by 2025, if we just keep in, having that winning mindset, dominating, lead generating, investing in yourselves, you know, making sure that all of your time is accounted for. Um, so if you guys aren't marketing or generating leads or investing in your business, like it's going to be really tough to navigate right now. So reach out. We're doing these workshops every, you know, we got multiple trainings today, by the way. So I wanted to give you guys an update. 11 a.m. today. We got the meeting with Brand360. We, we met with Brand360. They're like, this is how you connect your Brand360 and yada, yada uh, while we were at the uh, event. But like nobody had their computers pulled up to hook up their Brand360. Nobody did it while we were there, right? So we're going to do it today. We're going to make sure everything, we're going to learn how to use it. It's just another tool that we just have to use that's automated, right? And they give you partner points. So connect your Brand360. Let that send out some social posts too. Like have it all going out. The more the more messaging that's going out, it's just more brand awareness. No one remembers anybody's social post from yesterday. Like you can't tell me, you know, an influencer's social post from yesterday. So don't worry about if you're messaging too much or whatever. Just keep branding yourself, getting the brand out there. Get you are the brand. Like we we're just the the back end. You're the company. Like we're just facilitating your business. We're just so. Make sure that you guys are always marketing. Don't worry. Like you didn't get the engagement you wanted. Who cares? No, you didn't get enough likes. Don't worry. It doesn't matter. Just get out there. You're going to get business from it. People could see your post a thousand times, never like it once, and then call you for a loan. And that's actually what happens to, for me. You know, and I don't even market consumer direct stuff. I market, you know, B2B strategy. They just call me because they know I do loans. Yeah. So, so, so connect the, the, the brand 360 which is free. It's a free tool that Matt history has spent like $30 million. Literally it was about $29 million they spent on this. Um, and they, they continually add to it. They just built out like chat GPT in it, you know, which there's a ton of new features in it. A lot of you don't know about it's free. It posts for you. Um, it, in addition to whatever Zach's doing, we offer social media posts for you here. We added the video integration and yeah. Um, so that's free. So Zach's post plus brand 360 plus your personal post hopefully if you do it if you do your own videos or you guys need video editing like let me know i'm editing for a bunch of people i'm picking up the bill you know doing the the al tramosi type edits i'll do it for you just send me the raw footage i'll send it back to you fully edited teton you, you know if you need edits i know you're posting but if you want like edits i got you um so we could send you videos for like tiktok yeah. and instagram and you guys will edit them we'll edit them yeah we'll do like alex ramosi you know fully edited like you know. Yeah, I started finally posting like every day, but I, I, my, I'm just doing it myself. So I'll take you up on that. Yeah, I got you. we got you guys. Like we're investing. Like I'm going all in. You know, I'm putting so just email you, company. email you or marketing. Yeah, email me and marketing. I want to like personally make sure that it's executed. Is this uh, any videos? Yeah, your videos. Same thing. Okay. So anything. Okay. All right. Yeah. Reed's uh, like, I've got 46 videos ready to send over today. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Um, well, well, what I'd like to do, and, and this is something that I think uh, I used to do, and I just got out of it because I was trying to build the team and everything else, you know, make the excuses, right? 
Um, but if you do them in batches, it's a lot less work. Yeah, yeah. It is. that's very true. I just and, and what I did is I was doing batches uh, a month in advance. So I would literally do, shoot videos for three or four hours, maybe, and then just send it off to someone. Um, so I got you guys, guys, if you don't notice by the tone of my voice, like by what we're doing, like we want you to take action. Like I'm not going to take action for you. I can't do it yet. You know, like I'm working on your avatars, which has been a pain in the butt. Um, but, uh, but that's, that's its own, uh, it's, its own conversation, right? By the update on the avatars, like it's a lot more work. It needs to be shot very, I had to buy a green screen and we're going to film it. So it's a lot of, a lot of work. So we're working on that so you could live forever. Um, literally that's what the avatars are going to enable you to do, um, to, to duplicate content as you forever. It's, it's scary stuff, but it's really cool. So you guys got to get with the times. Um, how's that coming along? It's all like, I just had, to, I had to tighten up the greens. I had to get like equipment for it. Right. So, you know, but, uh, but it, it's a cool initiative and, I, and I'm excited about it and, uh, it'll allow everyone to do video content, like with just, you know, three words and then a video is generated. So um cool well guys 11 a.m today brand 360 i'll see you on there and then we got the 12 o'clock for your realtors e-realty meeting and then two o'clock we got the the uh the fundamentals and we're going over the dnc scrub which is like important to keep you guys alive in business all right guys have a great rest of your week thanks everybody